Some of the maintenance tasks that I perform in this plant, because we do utilize uh, ultrafiltration or UF membranes, and we also utilize RO membranes, which is reverse osmosis. So some of the things that uh, the plant will do is, is backwash, and those, those backwashes are automatic. They're set to uh, occur at a certain amount of volume. You know, once a certain amount of volume has been pushed through the UFs, it'll automatically initiate a backwash and kind of reverse the flow, you know, instead of sucking into the membrane, it'll sort of push it out, push, it'll also aerate, shake up anything that might be caught in the membrane itself. So that thing, that backwash system is automatic. Um, it is a good idea for operators to, uh, to watch the sequence, actually go up on top of the tank, maybe open the hatch and take a look at what's happening inside during the backwash. Um, another thing that the UFs do is what they what we call a MIT or a membrane integrity test. Now these UFs are set on a timer, so they'll do this MIT once every 24 hours. Um, and for most, yeah, it's not, again, it's a good idea for the operator to actually watch the MIT because in this case, there actually might be some air bubbles that won't be noticed. Like it might still pass the MIT but if we see air bubbles during that process, it will indicate that either we have a broken membrane or there's something's going on. There, the seal might be not be sealed properly, that sort of thing. So again, another another good reason why operators should watch that process, you know, regularly, maybe every second, third day sort of thing, maybe once a week at least if they can. Um, so yeah, that's, those are a couple of the, and again, yeah, that's set on a timer. Um, about once once every month, maybe we can get away with it a bit longer, but usually we, we do what we call a recovery clean on the ultrafiltration membranes. Now that's basically, there's two cleans there. There's a chlorine recovery clean and there's an acid recovery clean. And typically we try to do those two, three days apart, depending on water quality. Um, and then also water quality going into the UFs will dictate how often they need to be done. Um, for example, like we had an upset in our uh, raw water process about two weeks ago. Um, last week I did a chlorine recovery on UF number one because I could see that the effluent, the turbidity effluent wasn't the same. Um, it had poor water quality going into it, so I needed to clean that up and, and do a recovery clean on that day. Um, so yeah, that recovery clean, a lot of it is basically, you know, you, you initiate the clean as an operator, but then everything's sort of um, automatic that you kind of just watch to make sure your pumps are running, whatever pump you're doing. If it's chlorine, then you make sure your sodium hypochlorite's going in there. Um, you might want to record the volume to see what sort of uh, concentration is in the ultrafiltration units. Um, typically for our chlorine recovery cleans, we want about 500 milligrams per liter of chlorine soaking into those units and you want to soak them for about six hours minimum but we usually do it uh, where we initiate the clean at the end of the day let it soak overnight come back the next morning and then we neutralize it after that and send all that uh, all that water to waste to our process waste pond so yeah so when, like i said when we do the chlorine clean we want about 500 milligrams per liter but when we do the acid recovery clean um, after injecting the acid, we we want to test the pH in each Z box to ensure that it's right around 2.5 to 3. Um, the lower, the closer we get to 2.5, the, the better clean it, it will have. And then it's the same thing again. You want to soak it over, soak it, start soaking it at the end of the day. Come back the next day, neutralize it with the sodium hydroxide. In this case, bring up the pH and then send all that to the process waste pond. So those are the three major items for the UFs. Now for the ROs, um, those units actually get cleaned probably once every three months, but we're finding that uh, because we're polishing up our water pretty good and the quality going into the RO units, RO units is really of high quality. So we we find we we don't need to do a, a clean in place we could probably go four five six months even if we needed to before clean cleaning in place on the ro units 
And th that process is sort of similar to a recovery clean on the uh, UFs, but um, we do recirculate for about half hour. We want to heat up the water to a certain temperature because it does uh, it does a better clean that way. And then similar to the UFs, there are two separate cleans, but instead of a chlorine clean, here we have a acid clean and a, a base clean or a high pH clean and a low pH clean. Um, chlorine does not react well with the RO units, so we never want any type of, any concentration of chlorine going into the RO units. Um, it'll, it's a good chance it's gonna melt the fibers and, and do something like that, that, you know, we won't be able to recover that uh, that filter again, so that's why we don't want to add chlorine to it at all. But um, similar to the recovery cleans, we do them on separate days, usually two, three days apart, maybe a week apart. Um, typically start with the high pH clean. And then, like I said, it's two, three days after that, we do a low pH clean. So we want to heat up the water at a certain temperature, recirculate it through our RO units. We let it soak for an hour or two, recirculate it again. Sometimes we might find we need to change out the cleaning solution because there is an acid base, an acid cleaner and a base cleaner that we need to add to the clean in place tanks. Um, and then when we're getting that solution ready as well, we're always monitoring there's a certain pH we want to get to, a certain temperature, certain conductivity, that sort of thing. So once we do our first recirculation and we let it soak, then we, we will test the solution out again. If we find, you know, it's pretty dirty and we don't want to recirculate it again, we'll dump that solution, fill the tank up and make another solution and do the recirculation after that. Um, and at this point, it's usually um, also we'll be, we'll be changing the pre-filter cartridges. There's seven, seven pre-filters in each cartridge for a total of 14. At each train, we have two trains, so 28 cartridges are always being in use. And yeah, those get changed out during each cleaning process.